She calls it dark art. Wait till you see this. Brooke Shaden is a young 24-year-old photographer that is now inspiring photographers all over the world. Why? It's called originality. I'm from Pennsylvania, from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is like the Amish country um, of Pennsylvania and the Northeast. From a very young age, I thought I was going to be a poet. And so um, I would go out and climb a tree and write in my little notebook and, you know, think that I was being super artistic. Yeah. Um, and so all through middle school and high school, I thought I would pursue a career in journalism or something like that. Even though I had no interest in it, I thought that was the only thing you could do as a writer. So I thought maybe journalism. Um, and then I took a filmmaking course in high school my senior year and it just so happened that I did really well in it and I ended up winning a local film competition. So because of that I decided to go on and do um, filmmaking in college. But while I was taking that filmmaking class I took a photography class in high school as well and so that was the first time that I ever seriously picked up a camera. But in, during that class they wouldn't let us shoot people at all. So it was only inanimate objects, and I hated it. I thought it was the worst thing, because all I wanted to do was shoot people if I was going to shoot anything. So I started taking pictures of pictures of people that I had taken, which was totally not allowed in the class. And so I ended up getting a really bad grade, and I thought photography was horrible, and so I never wanted to do it again. And so it wasn't until I um, graduated college that I decided, well, I have a DSLR, so I might as well pick it up and try something with it. And that was the first time that I didn't have any constraints of school or you know, anyone telling me, okay, this is the project, so you have to do this. And so I was able to just think freely and creatively and do whatever I wanted. I came out here right after I graduated from Temple University. And uh, by that time I had a degree in film and English. So I thought that I was gonna come out here and write and direct and maybe do cinematography. And you know, I had the dream that all filmmakers have sure. when they come out. So I came out here and for about a month I was pursuing that and I was working at a production company as a receptionist. And then I was doing photography on the side because I had just started right around that time. Yeah. And um, it was right around then when um, my coworkers started coming behind my desk and looking at what I was editing and yeah. stuff. And they were like, you should just pursue photography instead of filmmaking. And they had all seen my short film, which was not good. So they were like, yeah, just do <laughs> photography, stick with that. And so it was about a full year after I moved to Los Angeles that I decided to stop filmmaking and pursue photography. So I quit my job and then went on and just did photography ever since. I started using Photoshop when I graduated, just when I picked up the camera, really. and. Um, just started teaching myself the basics and I really hate being taught things so whenever someone tries to say oh you know you could do it this way I'm like oh don't tell me don't tell me I just want to figure it out myself so because of being self-taught and only knowing the really obvious tools I sort of went from there and never really expanded beyond that too much so if you watch my post-processing um, you'll find that there's not a lot of you know technical things that I'm doing it's all just the most basic tools used in maybe unconventional ways that Perhaps other people don't use them in, but I found it to be kind of effective. <laughs> You're 24. Yes. You're single. Married. Married! Fabulous. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. And where did you meet your husband? I met him in high school. We've been together since we were 16. So, really? Yeah. Do you ever use him in your photos? No. No? He wants nothing to do with my photos, being in them at least. He's very supportive, but no. doesn't want to be in them. I mean, I run ideas past him all the time, and what I love is that He's, he's also one of the most critical people as well as the most supportive, so I can say, you know, what do you think of this idea? And he'll be the first one to say, it doesn't work, or yeah. this should be changed, or you could do this better. And it's especially helpful when I show him edits and I'll say, how do you think this looks? And he'll say, I can see this flaw in this photo, so you need to fix it before oh, wow. this gets posted. So that's so helpful. Wow. <laughs> do any of these pictures have anything to do with your personal stories? No, never. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've got an alter ego that comes out in your Sort of, face. sort of. Wow. It's, I mean, if I were to pull from my real life, then my pictures would look nothing like they do. Right. What I try to do is um, 
create worlds that I wish that we lived in that were would be more interesting that would be you know filled with all these juxtapositions that I like to explore because I think that you can't have happiness without sadness and life without death and so a world where all those things are more pronounced where you know you're more aware of all the flaws in people and all the good things in people I think that would be a much more interesting world and so I'm constantly building on that world that I wish we lived in that is so I mean, cool. even when I do self-portraits, it has nothing to do with me. And I only use myself because it's either, you know, most convenient or because I happen to think that some part of my look fits the character that I'm trying to achieve. And, and I'm sure that, you know, my desire to do self-portraits has to do with wanting to put myself in the frame just because I like to see myself in these other worlds that I'm creating. So wow. I think that's fun to do, you know? Interesting. So then we've got, there's some photos of people flying through rooms or yeah. flying off a hill. The heck do you do that? <laughs> I well, mean, are we getting several water different mixed processes. With no, um, with that's something that I never do. I get that question a lot: is do I take it underwater and then move the subject? And I never take a subject off of the background that they're on and move them to another place. I always do everything on location. So um, when I'm making people fly, it's usually um, a matter of having them propped up on a stool or something like that, and then editing the stool out from oh, under okay. them, something like that. Um, a lot of them can be done without anything, just sort of lifting each limb in the air and then putting them all together to make it look like, you know, the whole body was floating or something like that. The one of the girl hanging in that, you know, sack is really interesting <laughs> because um, I did that one actually as a self-portrait, which was very strange to do because we were out in the middle of the woods and I just brought a friend with me and I was like, do you think that if I sit in this fabric, you'd be able to tie it onto the tree? She was like, I think you're a little too heavy for me to just lift you and tie you onto the tree. But um, but we tried it anyways. And, and that one I really wanted to do as a self-portrait just because of where it came from in my mind. And I have this sort of obsession with birth and rebirth. And so that's what that whole series meant to me. That sack series that I did was just sort of, and covering up these women and and making them just sort of these flesh tones where you couldn't see any identity and it was just sort of a mysterious figure within this womb-like substance. The what, what is the one? title of that? I don't know. Something actually. artistically <laughs> amazing. Genius. Something. <laughs> So that one, I had my friend staying in a hotel um, nearby, and so I went into the hotel and, and I saw this room and I was like, this is a really interesting room, we should probably use it in some way. And, um, and so I thought that I wanted someone under this mattress where it was almost like you didn't notice that they were under a mattress at first, and so you look at it and you're like, oh, these girls are laying under a mattress. Oh, maybe they're dead, which I kind of put in there with the colors that I used and things like that. And then I thought that it would be just sort of too basic if I just had these girls laying dead under a mattress because it's like okay but who cares why are they there and so I decided to open the door behind them and have this sort of orange light coming out where it looked like there was maybe someone in the bathroom and so it added more of a story to it um, and so that's how a lot of my pictures come about where I try to think of a story and I try to have a really really developed character and um, and so in that case, it was sort of a character that you couldn't even see because he was in the bathroom, but you knew that someone was there, so it created that feeling of mystery. Interesting. You're already teaching workshops. Yeah. Like, how, how did that suddenly just happen in your 24? I mean, it usually takes people years to get to a point where they're teaching all over right. the nation. I think that I just feel really confident in what I'm doing because my process hasn't changed much from beginning to end. and so. So when I'm you know, going through my process, it's something that I know really well, something that I'm very confident in, and something that people ask me about all the time. And so I thought, well, if people are going to ask, and I feel confident enough to tell people how to do it, then I might as well just open up a workshop and you know, go through it that way. And um, I love the workshop experience because it's so personal, and it's just a group of 10 of us usually. And so we're all just in a room all day together, you know, learning how to make people fly and yeah. all that stuff. And, yeah. So I just love it. So do you have, um, obviously, you have fans that are much older than you. Yeah. Is that intimidating to suddenly see this older gentleman walk into your <laughs> workshop? And It's interesting. I, I never get intimidated by it because I know that everyone who's there is there for the same reason because they all just want to learn this new thing, you know? It doesn't matter what age you are, especially with photography. I think that people are so open in the arts that, you know, you can be 80 or you can be 8 and it doesn't matter. You know, everyone's there to learn the same thing. and. And the good thing is that it's such a specialized skill that, that I teach at my workshops that, you know, um, people aren't going into it with the mindset that, oh, if this person's here, then they must not know what they're doing at all. Because everyone has such a diverse background and, you know, we get baby photographers and portrait photographers and underwater and all these different people. And it just so happens that they're great at one thing, but they don't know how to make people fly in the air. So they're there. <laughs> 
um, I have a kiddie pool here that we're gonna be using that I got today. And so I'm gonna fill that with water and then also fill it with milk because I bought five gallons of milk. <laughs> and I thought that I would have it sort of be this murky, milky water. Um, and then I'm gonna have my subject in it. I'm going to shoot a series of pictures for this one where she'll sort of be in these, um, a combination of really calm poses and, a, and paired with really tense poses. So there's gonna be a lot of tension in a lot of it and just sort of like breaking free from this sort of sack that she's in. Um, it sounds pretty gross, wow. but... However, so then it's not totally gross, I brought some flowers. And so we're gonna have like little punches of color in there and just something to make it a little bit more soft and beautiful. <laughs> so then it's not so creepy. Okay, okay. <laughs> so Olivia is dressed in this half piece of sheet fabric slash torn dress, right? Yes. And she has you doing what? Well, I'm going to be laying in this pool. We're going to fill it with milk. And, um, <laughs> I don't know, we're gonna take it from there. Yeah. So are you excited? Because I'm freezing. I am excited. Um, this water is not going to be very cold compared with some of the places that we've been. Oh, okay. So, um, so I'm not so are you too used to this? about it. You're used to I'm Brooke's used crazy to ideas. I'm very used to this. I'm so very used to Brooke's crazy ideas. Because you've worked with Brooke for quite a while, right? Yeah, we've been working together for about two years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she gives you an idea and you say, I'll do it. Pretty much. Right? Pretty much. <laughs> I'm the go-to girl for when she has crazy ideas and okay. says, we're going to hike for an hour into the woods and then we're going to put you in this creek and then you're going to be doing a back bend and, <laughs> and then we'll cover you in mud and I'm just going to take a few shots and then we can go back. And okay. I mean, awesome. That sounds fine with me. So what is your character? Like what do you get in your head? Because you kind of have to act, don't you? Yeah, um, although with Brooke's process, it's so quick um, and she gives such specific directions that it's pretty... Um, it's pretty simple, and uh, and the way that we shaking. we get set up uh, very much puts you in character because it's okay. We're kind of going all in. Awesome. Okay, well, jump in the milk. Okay. <laughs> Hi. So you were in charge of getting all the milk. Uh, yes. Right. From the car. Yes. Yeah. So her name is Devin, and she interns with Brooke. Yeah. And so I'm sure that's a very coveted position. How did you get that? Yes. Um, I followed Brooke's work for about a year now and I think she's a phenomenal artist so yeah. I emailed her and I said please 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 let me be your intern I will do anything and um, now I'm interning for her and it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> what I want to do is create art for people to be inspired by and um, follow in Brooke's footsteps. I think she's a phenomenal person and um, I'm so excited that I'm here. Awesome. Well we're excited to be here too. <laughs> <laughs> okay well let's do this. My general rule is that I don't tell them to do anything that I can't do because I want to be as miserable as they are, but in this case <laughs> it's just not practical to jump in with her. Um, so I'm using the uh, 5D Mark II, and right now I'm using a 24mm lens, which I would never normally use. I'm only using it because I'm shooting just like this from overhead, and so I want to make sure that I can get everything in the shot. Um, typically I use my 50 millimeter lens, which I'll be using later on. So I shoot on manual, but I oftentimes start with aperture priority just to see where the settings want to take me, and just a, it's my way of light metering. So right now I'm at an f2.8, and I have my ISO bumped up to 500, which is no problem for this camera. And right now my shutter speed is at 1 2,500th of a second, which I might have to change. So I'm going to take a test shot and see what needs to be adjusted. And she can stay just like that. And so I'll just get right like this. Okay, so um, my settings were pretty good. I'm just going to adjust slightly and take it to 1 2,000th of a second. And then now we're actually going to shoot. So. What do you want me to do? You can lay back, lay your head back like you had it. Yeah, that's good. I'll take one like this. Um, pull your left hand on top of the flowers on your stomach. Yeah, yep, just like that. Yep, and then you're just gonna put your you know, ear to the water here. 
like yep. that. Yeah, just like that. And down even more. And then let this one come out. Yeah, and I just want to see your fingers resting on the top, just like that. So shooting usually takes about five minutes and I usually take about five photos per photo shoot. So when it comes to post-processing, I don't have much to do in the sense that I don't have anything to like, you know, I don't have about 200 pictures to go through because right. I've only taken exactly what I need. Um, I'll take a test shot and then I'll take the main shot and if I don't like that, then I'll tweak it. And so it usually comes out to about five pictures, but if I'm doing a composite of some sort, then it'll be a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'll put that straight into Photoshop and then get to work on it. Yeah. And that usually takes m a minimum of two hours. Yeah. And then... On one photo. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I always sleep on that photo after I started editing it. And then the next day I look at it fresh and I'm like, okay, what needs to happen? Because usually I oversaturate my pictures and then I have to desaturate them <laughs> or vice versa. So it just <laughs> takes a fresh eye after sleeping on it. Right. Because everyone who meets me, they're like, you do these photos? Yeah. Because I'm not like that at all. It's yeah. almost like I have to explore it in art because I don't have it anywhere else in my life, you know? It's like I just have this very happy, you know, upbeat lifestyle. And so, <laughs> so when it comes to photography, I'm constantly just sort of accessing that darker part of myself. And I don't know when it started, though. It was just one day I started seeing death as being really, really beautiful. And I started becoming really in interested in posing death with something beautiful in a photograph and so maybe if I was exploring the theme of death then the photo would be so beautiful that you would almost forget that you're looking at a picture of death right. and so that's what I'm constantly trying to do in all my pictures is sort of juxtapose life with death and death with life and sort of play with that whether it's literal or not so literal. But I'm using my remote setup for this, so I'll be standing out there triggering with the remote each time, and then I'll probably switch hands just so then the remotes, I can get rid of it, you know, and post pretty easily. Oh, you're so brave! I like to think that if the subject doesn't have an identity, then other people can sort of put themselves in the picture. I thought of this when I was thinking, okay, what else can I do in the water? And I just happened to be sitting with that dress at the time, putting it in the car. So, so I was like, <laughs> okay, I love this dress. I want to wear this dress. Mm -hmm. And so then that got me, to me thinking about, you know, a proper woman wearing this kind of a dress, you know, maybe in the 1800s or something like that. Right. And, um, and so I thought water makes sense that we would use an umbrella and why not flip it upside down and just create this whole world where nothing seems quite right, you know, where you're seeing this character that couldn't possibly live in this time and this umbrella that's not being used in the right way and just sort of twisting everything so then it's just not quite right. So why did you choose to do a self-portrait? Is that because so many people wonder how the heck you do these self-portraits? Yeah, I yeah. thought it would be fun to show the process and, and I love doing self-portraits. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... It's something that I don't love it because I like being in front of the camera because I hate being in front of the camera, but it's fun for me to do personally just because I like having all the control and, you know, I, I've kind of taught myself from doing so many exactly what I need in a pose and so it just seems to go really fast and, I mean, it's enjoyable while I'm doing it. Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, not today because I'll be in the freezing cold water, but <laughs> <laughs> most days. Yeah. Okay. So this would be the main shot to get the umbrella part of it. And then I'll hold it from up here so that I can get this other arm. Now I'm keeping this here just so then the lighting is all the same on me. And I'm just going to get my hair blowing across my face. 
that not trigger? Uh uh. So now I'm basically going to do a lot of that again, but with Devin throwing water on me to look like rain. Yeah. We're gonna do it from both sides. So you'll just sort of scoop it and throw it up in the air and hope that it hits something. Everything was good. It? Yeah, so um, now just in case I want to add room to the top or bottom of this frame, um, I'm locking my focus down so it's on manual focus and then I'm going to tilt the camera down and tilt the camera up so then I can expand the frame instead of cropping if I need to. I hear from people of all ages a lot. And that makes me really happy because I like knowing that it's not just, you know, young girls who want to be self-portrait artists who are following me because I'm a self-portrait artist or anything like that. They like the concepts and because people see that I'm doing something hopefully a little bit different, you know, that um, you see a lot of conceptual art out there, but I think that a lot of it, if it's dark art, it's really dark art. and and people are a little bit afraid to go near that kind of thing sometimes and and if it's not dark then it's sort of you know bubble gum and you know and balloons and stuff like that and there's nothing wrong with either one of those things but I like to marry the two and I think that because of that you know it allows darker artists and people who like that stuff to get into it as well as the people who don't like that that dark art and so it's sort of pulling from all these different places where you know it's conceptual but um, you know, it still tells a story and, and there's all these different elements. So it's dark and it's not dark at the same time because everyone can find something different in it. Right. So I think that that's why perhaps I'm pulling from different places. You just have to start doing it. I mean, that's the first thing is that I think that a lot of people are just so scared to just pick up the camera and, and go out and just do a picture because they're so afraid that they're going to fail. And I hate seeing that because even if you fail, that's just that's the best time to learn from it and to ask yourself what went wrong and how can I do it better. And if you don't know, then you look it up. And, and if you still don't know, then just try again and keep trying. And so once you get past that and you do it, the next thing I think is to ask yourself what your artistic voice is. Because I think that everyone has one, whether you think you do or not. Because so many people start out and they don't know what they want to focus on or, you know, they're just sort of lost in which direction they're going to go. So I think that if you just simply take a second and talk to yourself about what you want to be putting out there and um, you know, say to yourself, do you want to create dark art or do you want to create, you know, portraits of people or what, what's your passion? Everyone has a passion. You might have to, you know, shop around a little bit to find it, but I think that if you can simply write down in one sentence what, if anything, you want to put out into the world, that one sentence, if you can put that in a picture, then that's going to be your style. And I think that that's a really important thing to try to do for all artists, no matter what your medium is. What is your one sentence? I want to make beautiful what others find disturbing. So wow. that's what I always try to put out there in every single one of my pictures. I'm Brooke Shaden, I'm a conceptual fine art photographer, and I've just been framed. Yay! Okay. Perfect! Brooke, you are incredible, and you're only 24 years old. You are an inspiration. Next week, somebody's getting married. <laughs> <laughs>